Basically, he reported that at 5.04 p.m. that it was uh, strong enough that he could not measure it. The uh, record reports that we have are strictly unofficial <clears throat> out of Alaska and uh, Colorado, but uh, very, very strong. The, uh, we have reports of uh, substantial building damage in San Benito County and uh, then reports of uh, breakdowns around the Bay Area. pretty rough. It's a pretty widespread outage situation. Uh, we're even in the dark in the office. Customer service is emergency. Okay, in your phone book on B12, the B section, but on B12, it tells you how to turn off your gas valve. Yeah, yeah, gas 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 Only if they have a gas leak, then we'll, we're going to take that information. If the gas is on, they don't have any leaks, they're going to be okay. Okay, I will report this and make sure we'll do as soon as we can. We'll get an answer. I've got a large number of circuits out, but I don't think I have any subs out. Anybody like to answer some phone calls downstairs? We'll train you. Burge, this is uh, George. We have sustained a very considerable damage in Oakland area. 9th Avenue and East 18th, we got a strong area old outside. Everybody's throwing gas, wired down, yeah. separate them. Yeah. Yeah. Right, they said do not turn it back on without exploding gas. And if gas over the street, gas leak. Yeah, line down. Richmond, hey Joe.
once we were able to stabilize what we had, all right, minim minimum load, what have you, all our stays were tied in, now we're ready to start picking up load, then those priorities came in. Communications is so important in a disaster. And then uh, the emergency uh, command posts, like uh, police, city emergency offices, what have you. And then the hospitals came right close behind that. And if we could, uh, if we could energize both locations at the same time, we did that. The room was shaking. <laughs> the indications were the first shot we had here is we lost Metcalf. All the breakers went green. Then we started getting calls from the different switching centers around, and we just went uh, very erratic frequency, started oscillating. Our uh, computers were down for a little while, and we brought the uh, Fresno backup EMS into service. We dropped an area pretty much from the San Francisco side of the Golden Gate Bridge all the way down through San Francisco, the peninsula, down in the coast, Moss Landing, Carmel, and through the Salinas Valley. You could tell it was a major emergency, and I was getting also information back on the newscasts and could tell from that that it was very, very serious. My estimates, we had about 700,000 electric customers out, maybe about 90,000, 100,000 gas customers. Jackson. Today we're in a cleanup mode. Uh, we have uh, got a lot of people uh, who have not gas service, uh, approximately 10,000 or so people. The electric side of the business, we're in the same uh, situation, which is a cleanup situation. It is chaotic, but I think the customers are pretty appreciative that we're here and that we provided them some good information. And I also think that um, our crews are out there, we're doing a good job. They're appreciative, actually. and. Um, they're not mad at all. They're just very anxious. Yeah, I have a report here that indicated uh, between 5 and midnight, we had approximately 4,500 calls come into the Oakland office. Oh, the volume is, is, is at least uh, 10 times greater than we normally have. But today they're going to be repairing mostly uh, wires down and uh, damage that was caused by the earthquake. I guess that we've got uh, crews mobilizing into uh, Oakland from... Uh, on the Creek, Antioch, and the Hayward area. We also have seven crews coming from uh, San Joaquin Valley region, Merced, and Stockton, and they should arrive at 10, 11 o'clock. This service is back on. That one's back on. The three-pot bank at the end isn't quite on yet, but it will be in a minute. The biggest problem is to, to ascertain the extent of the damaged areas and, and the requirements for manpower. We had over 90,000 people that have to be relit. We moved quite a few people from from San Joaquin Valley region, Sacramento Valley region, and Redwood region, and we'll redeploy people as, as areas are, are uh, put back in service. You're not going to be in that big of area. You're going to be in an area about this big. Okay. Uh, the game plan today was we're going to go after Santa Cruz City proper, and we're going to try to get uh, as much gas uh, restored as possible. We have uh, 38 people from San Joaquin are going to be doing the relights in that area. Morning. My name is Vince. I'm with PG&E. Yeah. Here to turn your gas back. I found the service on the two units. This guy said everything was okay, so I went here and I checked the other unit to make sure all the appliances were okay. And uh, I'm just going to go to the next next place and uh, see what I find. Well, we're from Fresno. There's a group of us, about 18 of us from Fresno, and uh, we caravaned up. Uh, our service foreman called us about 7 p.m couple hours after the earthquake and filled a suitcase up and took off. Here we are. We started from right here. We're going down the street over here. Um, Lenore and them are, are on the other side of Rodriguez. They're coming up this way. 
Well, we're trying to work as a team here and, uh, and just take one area at a time. I think we're the only group of uh, past servicemen here in, uh, in um, this town. <laughs> Watsonville. Watsonville. Uh, there's uh, 22 of us from Sacramento. So uh, it's hard to get everybody on at one time with 22 servicemen. We've asked for help from uh, neighboring utilities. We have about 280 gas servicemen from Southern Cal Gas, San Diego Gas and Electric, from Sierra Pacific, and Mountain Fuel in uh, Salt Lake City. And it's uh, an opportunity to, to help these guys out, but on the other hand, someday the same thing could happen down in San Diego, and I know that uh, we will really need their help down there. So, uh, you know, it could be uh, vice versa in the, in the future here. So. You know, we're happy, like I said, to help out. Seventeen years I've been with pg &E. this is the worst disaster area I've ever been in. Well, I'm with GC, and what we're doing here is we're replacing some old copper wire with um, wire that's insulated for tree damage. Under normal conditions, why we have things laid out, plenty of time to prepare for it, and uh, just to organize ourselves to do the job the way it should be done. In this case here, it's we're just flying at things that uh, with no 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 notice at all. Just come out in the morning and go to work. Well, it's hard to tell in terms of what happened to the system at this stage. We're going to have to do a lot of analysis to try to determine exactly what happened. Uh, but basically, we ended up isolating and losing a good portion of San Francisco, predominantly, as we can see, as a result of our transmission system and the failures we had in the transmission system. Uh, to our generating stations, the only place where we had any substantial damage is at Moss Landing. Uh, the earthquake uh, took us out of service the other night. Uh, we were putting out about 700,000 kilowatts at the time. The damage to the plant itself, uh, there are some structural problems. Uh, probably the most visible things is some water storage tanks that ruptured at the, uh, the time of the earthquake. The switchyard, I'm afraid, took the bulk of the, uh, the damage uh, from the earthquake. Uh, the, the words we've been using is the 500 kV yard is trashed. We're trying to recover. Uh, we have got units uh, back online on the old plant. A lot of it right now is still a damage assessment, trying to determine exactly what we've got to do to get the unit, the big unit, back in service, Unit 6. Well, I'm pleased to report that uh, the Diablo Canyon uh, performed uh, well. Uh, actually, uh, the, the plant was 150 miles away from the from the uh, epicenter, uh, and uh, there was very little uh, shaking felt. Uh, unit one was uh, on it was out of service on its third refueling outage. Unit two was at full power and continued to operate at full, full power during the entire uh, period of the earthquake and following. And I might add that uh, the availability of that 1,100 megawatts of power to the system at that very crucial time was very, very important in anchoring the southern, the southern part of our system. This is uh, going on 30 hours for us now. The second 30 hours. A little over 24 hours now this time. Since 7.30 yesterday. How tired are you? Uh, I'm pretty tired, I guess. Uh, I've been out here about uh, 9 or 10 hours. We placed the overhead lines and transformers. Uh, I've been working since 7.30 yesterday. Oh, wow. I guess what is today? Friday already? Yeah. Well, we got off at 3 this morning, and we came back in at 11, so got about maybe, I don't know, maybe 4 or 5 hours sleep, came right back in, you know. Oh, we've been on and off, 24 hours here, off and off and on, quite a while. We've been working all of them, uh, we, 
from 12 hour shift to 14 hour shift and they've been great. They seem to uh, not to mind to work so hard and so long. They just get in there and do it. Yeah, everybody's pretty up about, you know, getting the work done. It's been a lot, a lot of hard work, but uh, we've made a lot of friends out here. Everybody's glad to see PG&E coming and we get a lot of thumbs up. Well, I've seen some signs that were thanking PG&E and I think a lot of the people that didn't know what went on in this office, um, after they saw the the way the service was getting back and the way people were working, I think uh, earned a lot of respect. I think the sign says it. You know, just just thank you very much. And you may not think people appreciate you, but they really do. You guys are great. You really helped out. Came out, closed the mains the best we could. Although the adverse conditions that we were under, I think we fared real good. And thank God you guys helped us out. Appreciate it. With so many gas leaks and uh, things that had to be checked out, that we needed the expertise of uh, pg and &E employees. And without them, uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to be sure that some of these buildings were secure or unsafe or whatever. Uh, so we, without them, we would have really had some bigger problems. Everybody's really working well together, you know. There's, you know, every, because there's like a sense that, you know, the things need, the things need to be done. So, you know, we're just going out and doing it. Well, I used to work here. Uh, I spent eight years over here, and uh, they needed volunteers to come over and help, so I did the system, I thought. And, uh, most of the guys that were from San Francisco originally volunteered to come down and help out. You get sort of a spree to where everybody pitches in. Our whole, uh, I'd say two-thirds of our yard showed up without any phone calls on, Friday, on uh, Tuesday. I'd say everybody's pretty much one unit. We're all working together to get this back online. It was uh, a wonderful thing, really, to behold the, uh, the teamwork of everyone working together to recover from a, from a tremendous disaster. I think the response of this organization from every employee in the field to the support people in the, in the offices was absolutely outstanding. It was a team effort probably unparalleled in the utility industry of America. I was driving home after 31 hours and listening to the radio and that's the first time reality hit me. And uh, I was really emotionally uh, affected by it. Uh, but reflecting back on it in the 30, you know, 31 hours I was here, it was just getting our system back together, priority, all right. And I think to, to a man, everybody felt that way. We learned some very positive things. We learned that uh, when we're focused and we've got something that we know we have to accomplish, we can accomplish anything, absolutely anything. And we can rise to Herculean efforts. Our people are saying, it's our job. We just went about doing our job, and they really didn't recognize the heroic nature even of, of what they had done. And I'm sure that there isn't an employee that went through this crisis who uh, now doesn't really know and understand the commitment of PG&E to serve the customers, the commitment to safety, the commitment to the public well-being and, and well-good, and also the commitment to one another to uh, you know, do our share and to help our, our fellow employees uh, get things done.